Okay, my Tom Penny story. So let me put it in context first before I met him. So from about 13 years old till the day I met him when I was 17, all I did was watch this one tape of all the footage we could possibly find of him edited together. So my boy Nigel, Nigel Alexander, for most people who know, he introduced me to Tom Penny when I was 13. And he had made this video. He found every video part, every single clip from every video he could possibly get his hands on, right? So from 13 to 17, I'm basically just brainwashing myself studying Tom Penny, study, study. Every day I'm watching this video and I'm hearing stories. You know, Nigel would tell me stories about him. Dude, like when he first introduced me to him, dude, you gotta hear about this guy, Tom Penny. Like, he's the best guy ever. Here's the video I made. And, and then he would just start telling me, yeah, like I heard the first time he went to Carl's Bad Gap. He didn't even look at it. He just got to the school and he kick flipped without looking at it. And you just hear these myths, different people with different stories. Like, yeah, like Jeremy Fox, the owner of Flip, told me personally one, one year in Tampa, he was like, yeah, you know, Tom was, uh, you know, he was skating outside in the parking lot one day and he was just skating flat ground and you could not hear his board, it was silent, it was silent. He'd pop his board and it was just silent. It was like, once I got in the industry more and like got sponsored and I met other pros, I would ask them to tell me Tom Penny's story. So until I met him when I was 17, I only know stories of this human and I see limited footage because he disappeared. He was big in like the early 90s, like maybe 95 to like 97, early 98. He just, he came on the scene, killed everything, murdered every contest, video parts, and then just vanished, right? So by the time I come in to start skating, we only just have footage, nobody knows where he went, he just, he was just a mystery, he just disappeared, right? So I have this built up vision of Tom as just a mythical character, right? He's not real. He's like no different than Santa Claus. Santa Claus was just as real as me. Like, you know about all the stories, remember? You know, you, you better not shy, better not cry, you know? Santa Claus is coming, you know? Don't be a bad person, you'll be on the naughty list. Like, like, Tom was like on some like mythical shit like that. So, fast forward a couple years, I get on S Footwear at the time. Tony Evienth, who was the team manager at the time, great dude, rest in peace on the team for a little while now, six months or so, and he starts telling me like, hey, Tom's like hitting us up. Like he sent me, uh, he showed me footage that Tom sent from France or his filmer sent from France of Tom skating and like talking into the camera. He was talking to somebody on the phone and they filmed him. So I'm like, oh my God, this is real Tom footage. He's like, yeah, yeah, Tom's starting to come back around. Um, I think he was living in France at the time. And so just hearing that Tom was coming back on the scene was, was exciting to me. Tony comes telling me, hey, we're about to go on this tour in Germany, and I can't guarantee it, but we're pretty sure Tom's going to show up. He's saying he's going to show up. And at the time, I was terrified of flying, like, more so than now. Like, I can fly now. Then, crazy fear of flying. And so I was known for skipping out on tours, like... You know, I may or may not show to the airport and I may or may not end up on the trip. Like if it's a far, I may have a panic attack and not go to the airport, you know? I was like 17 and I just, I was terrified of flying. But this one, I was like, I'm going for sure. I knew in my mind, no matter what, I'm not missing the flight. I'm gonna deal with it, whatever. I just wanted to give some context of like what Tom meant to me at this time, right? He is larger than life, mythical character to everybody in skateboarding at that time, especially the kids my age who came in right after he vanished. Uh, so we get to Germany. It was our first night. We got to our hotel. It's, I'm, I'm on this tour. It was like a mega tour too. It was like Eric Costin, uh, Arto Sari, Rodrigo TX, Bob Burnquist, Rick McCrank. Yeah, that was pretty much the, the pros that were on. And then it was myself, Mikey Taylor, and PJ Ladd. And we were like the three brand new young bucks, fresh ams on the team. And we're excited to be out there, you know. Atiba and Akko are there uh, as photographers. So we got a nice big crew, check into our hotel, and Tony tells me when we're getting in, yeah, yeah, Tom should be here tonight. Like he's saying he's coming, he should be here tonight. And I'll let you know when he gets here. So it's starting to get late, like I was getting jet lag. Me, uh, Mikey and PJ were sitting down in the lobby of the hotel just having sodas and eating snacks or whatever. It's starting to get late. We're not, we're starting to doubt that Tom's gonna show up. Me, PJ, and Mikey are like young kids talking to each other like, wow, you think Tom's really gonna show up? Is he really gonna show up? We're all just so excited. And if you know PJ Ladd, it's hard to get him excited. And this dude was excited. So after a while, we're like, ah, let's just go upstairs, whatever. So we go upstairs. 
me and Mikey get into this crazy wrestling match with Atiba and Akko. For those who don't know, Atiba and Akko are twin brothers. Uh, most people probably know Atiba, but he has a twin brother, Akko. And um, me and Mikey just were, we were just rambunctious, right? And we just started getting into a big wrestling match. And there was actually a S promo, Germany tour promo video out there on YouTube where there's footage of us wrestling in there. And it was that night. We wrestle, whatever, it's getting late, room service. I'm just laying in my bed, and like it's the two beds and the phone in the middle, just ring. At this point, my mind is completely off of if Tom's coming, I'm just not even thinking about it anymore. Pick it up and it's like, hey Paul, it's Tony. Yo, what up, Tony? Yeah, I'm down here in the lobby and uh, Tom's here. And I swear my heart dropped. <gasps> like, <gasps> oh my God, like butterflies in my stomach. I called Nigel from right there, yo. Nigel, just letting you know, I'm about to go downstairs, I'm about to meet Tom Penny, I can't believe it, but I'm kind of scared, I'm kind of nervous, like I almost don't want to go downstairs, but I want to go downstairs, but just what thought you should know, like, I'm about to fucking meet Tom Penny, dude. And he was like, what are you kidding me? Like, oh my god. So, you know, we're just like, I'm like a Bieber fan, you know, I'm Bieber fever, you know, with Tom Penny, you know, so, so I hang with the phone, me and Mike, like, let's go. And so we go downstairs, and the way when you come out of the elevator, it was like from the back part. And Tom, say Tom was sitting where I am, right? He was just in a chair, just laid back, right? He had a, a black beanie on, kind of like a, he, he kind of had like a cholo vibe going on, like a, a button up, uh, black and white kind of flannel pattern, sh long sleeve shirt, big ass rock aware pants, and some black suede XLs, right? He just sitting there in this chair. And we're coming up from behind him. And dude, my heart, I can't, it's, it's rare, I can't even, Call another time having this kind of like okay like oh my god this is real like oh my god and we're walking up and they're sitting around him kind of like he's holding court and people are sitting around him Tony and all the other like the filmers team managers everybody's just kind of like Tom you need anything good Tom and he's just sitting there just quiet just, mm -hmm. and so we walk up and we're just me Mikey and PJ standing there and, uh, and then Tony is like come here and so we walk over to him, hey, hey Tom, uh, I want to meet you, introduce you to our, uh, our new AMs on the team. You know, this is, you know, Paul, Mikey, and, um, and PJ. And he, the way he looks at you is, is cool, too, because he's got, a, like, a real deep stare, and he has bright blue eyes, like Frank Sinatra style. And like, uh, like they were at the time. And, uh, and he just looks at you, right, no expression, and just... Deep ass voice, just, <laughs> just like, boy, nice to meet you. Just like that, right? And we're just like, I swear I was shaking, my knees are shaking. I'm, hi, how you doing? Like, how's it going on? Like, oh my God, and then like, he sits back down. And we're just like standing there like, like, you know, that awkward when you stand, you don't know what to do with your hands and you're looking at the floor like, uh, and then so we end up just going back and sitting at the bar and, and having sodas and you know where the position was like the bar was there and Tom was sitting like the setup was over there. We were just like sneaking a peek like oh my god he's right there. Oh shit. Like look at this Tom Penny. Like and we were just talking about like tricks he did and whatever. Just, this is crazy right? And um, for the rest of the trip it was just like the whole time I felt like that, the whole time. This is my hero, right? I dreamt of skating and meeting this guy my, for four years up to this point. Every day I'm dreaming. I got pictures of the wall, I'm watching videos of him in slow motion every day, trying to learn my tricks like him. And he's, uh, he's right here, he's real, he's in the flesh, right? We're doing demos, he was skating so good. And dude, his clothing, the way he would dress, that's another thing about Tom, was like, I used to love the way he would dress. He would always match shirt with the shoes and the beanie and um, big clothes and he just the way he carried himself just so fucking so dope right uh and i didn't really talk to him much there was another time we were on the tour bus going from one i think we were going to frankfurt germany and we were going from one stop to another and we were on our tour bus and this is before iPods. I just had a disc man and a big ass uh, like booklet, a binder of CDs, right? Like 100 CDs or whatever it was. And I'm sitting there, I'm just listening. And he's sitting in the seat in front of me and he just turns around like, can I see your CDs? I'm just, uh, 
like I only had like two or three actual interactions with the guy and he was like, we were on tour for, I don't know, like a 10 day tour, but I was so frozen to say anything to him or like, hey Tom, how you doing? And it was just like, I would stand afar and just kind of like, yeah, like psycho stare at him, you know? So that was kind of my first experience meeting Tom Penny and uh, it's really cool. Like, cause every time I see him, I turn into that little kid and I still get like that every time because I don't see him very often you know I bump into him here and there random things you know and uh and so yeah that's my story about Tom Penny my first time meeting him